Aloha, and welcome to Live from Nuora Lab at Hawaii. My name is Jamika. I am an outreach assistant here at the International Gemini Observatory, a program of NSF's Nuora Lab. Joining me today as moderator is my colleague, Alyssa Leilani Losi. So for those of you joining us in the YouTube audience, please make sure that you, anytime you are ready, um, you can post your questions and comments right there in the chat. And Alyssa will pop over and join us with your questions and comments. Now you can leave those anytime throughout the chat, even when our two science guests are presenting and we will check in with Alyssa throughout the presentation. So for those of you who have uh, who are new to live from Nora Lab, here's just a bit of background on the Gemini Observatory. So the International Gemini Observatory is one of five programs of NSF's Noir Lab, which is the preeminent U.S. National Center for ground-based nighttime optical and infrared astronomy. Gemini Observatory is composed of twin telescopes. Gemini North, located on Mauna Kea at an altitude of 13,382 feet. It's a little over 4,000 meters. And Gemini South on North Central Chile's Cerro Pachon. Now, the Gemini telescopes actually observe in visible and infrared light. Gemini's eight meter, eight meter reflectors, it's about 26 and a half meters, uh, 26 and a half feet, actually collect this light with mirrors that are coated with a special layer of protected silver rather than aluminum, which is the more traditional coating for large telescopes. Now, the mirror is made of ultra low expansion glass and it's about 20 centimeters or eight inches thick. Now, Gemini has large vents which open during observations and these, these vents allow the cold night air to flow through the observatory which produces more stable images. Now with a telescope in each hemisphere, the Gemini Observatory can observe objects throughout the entire night sky. So, um, a little bit of a science update here, and I will have a link in the video description uh, underneath the video after we post everything so you can pull up our science update and have a link to the video that is playing now. So um, our science highlight is going to be about the Mauna Kea telescopes confirming the first brown dwarf discovered by radio observations. For the first time, astronomers have used observations from the LOFAR radio telescope, the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility, operated by the University of Hawaii, and the International Gemini Observatory, a program of NSF's NOR Lab, to discover and characterize a cold brown dwarf. Now, this object, with a very long name, designated BDR, J1750 plus 3809 is the first substellar object to be discovered through radio observations until now. Uh, these brown dwarfs have been uncovered in large infrared and optical surveys. Now, brown dwarfs are actually substellar objects that straddle the boundary between the largest planets and the smallest stars. Um, you may know or have heard of brown dwarfs as, as failed stars um, because they lack the mass to trigger, uh, to actually trigger hydrogen fusion in their cores. And instead, they glow with these infrared wavelengths that are leftover heat from their formation. Now, along with paving the way for future brown dwarf discoveries, this result is an important step towards applying radio astronomy to the exciting field of exoplanets. 
So to learn more, again, the link will be in the video description, as well as the link to our CosmoView video series. And this is episode 13. So to our science guest today, we have two fantastic ladies with us. And our, our presentation today is um, collaborating with the Mauna Kea Observatory's Partners in Outreach. So if we can start with highlighting Ms. Shelly Pelfrey, we'll begin with her intro. Shelly Pelfrey is the Outreach Coordinator for the WM Keck Observatory and provides administrative support to multiple departments at Keck. She also manages the observatory's Kali Hiel program. Fix that if I messed up later, Shelly. Uh, she manages that program, which offers Keck employees resources for learning about Hawaii's culture, history, and the place overall. An avid cook, Shelly often shares her skills with the Keck family, cooking during Zoom lunches and fried rice Fridays. <laughs> During the pandemic, she's become a proficient Zoom administrator, running international meetings of up to 500 participants. Shelly has a degree in geography and environmental studies from the University of Hawaii Hilo and is a proud alum of Kamehameha School's uh, Kapalama campus. In her free time, Shelly serves as an akalai for the Alohi Correct me if I messed that up again, uh, Shelly, the Alohi Polynesian Dance Academy. She also crafts shell jewelry exclusively collected from the Wailea Bay and is the chief cook and dishwasher for her husband and two cats in Waikoloa. Welcome, Shelly Pelfrey. Thank you, mahalo. Our second guest is Mary Beth Lechak. Mary Beth is the Director of Strategic Communications at the Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope here on the Big Island of Hawaii. She also runs the Mauna Kea Scholars Program, which is an innovative astronomy outreach program for Hawaii public school students. Mary Beth has an undergraduate degree in astronomy and astrophysics from Penn State University and a master's degree in educational technology from San Diego State. Her passions include astronomy, sharing astronomy with the public, astronomy-based crafts, <laughs> and running. She lives in Waimea, Hawaii with her husband and cat. Welcome, Mary Beth. <laughs> Jamika, thank you uh, so much for having both Shelly and I on today. We are pleased to have you. And just a quick note here uh, to everyone in our YouTube audience. So uh, once we uh, get started here with uh, Mary Beth is going to start with, I believe, sharing her screen or maybe Alyssa is going to continue sharing the screen. Um, even throughout this presentation, please let us know if you have questions or comments. Have you uh, come to any of the outreach activities that uh, Mary Beth and Shelly and uh, actually Alyssa and I will be speaking on a few uh, activities too. If you have participated or if you've come, drop us a comment in the, in the chat. Tell us how you liked it. Um, we would love to hear from you. Okay, over to you, Mary Beth. Right, thank you so much. I would just like to say in defense of brown dwarves, they're often called failed stars. I like to think of them as very successful planets. Um, and so with that, Alyssa, my next slide, please. So um, when we were, when Shelly and I were asked to speak today, it was about sort of the, the initiatives that um, bridge the Mauna Kea Observatory's outreach community. We're, we're a fairly tight outreach community. I work with both Jamika and Alyssa, um, as well as staff from across the observatories on a whole bunch of projects. And a lot of the work that we do is, you know, individually focused on each facility. So you know, this, this Noir Lab live from Noir Lab is a great presentation, you know, example, this is spotlighting Noir Lab and Gemini and the Gemini Observatory. And every facility has across Mauna Kea has those kinds of, of programs, you know, CFHT, for example, we're doing a, a virtual star party. Uh, we have two little video segments that we do crafting with science and, um, you know, 
science, we we're going to do science in a minute, but it, it, it actually sometimes takes a little bit longer. Um, however, a lot of the large projects that we work on, you know, kind of straddle multiple observatories. And, and the reason for that is we don't have a lot of individual facilities, full-time staff dedicated to it. So at the Canada France Hawaii Telescope, my position is essentially to explain astronomy to people. And oftentimes I'm, well, always, I'm the only person at my facility who's dedicated hundred percent to outreach. So when we want to do some of these really big programs, um, we partner often with our fellow facilities. So I am located in Waimea, which for those of you not familiar with the Big Island is the home of the Keck Observatory and the Canada France Hawaii Telescope. Our facility is actually bookend town. Um, Shelly and I are the, are the North Hawaii people um, on, the, on the MKO Outreach Committee. And so we partner together a lot on activities in, in North Hawaii. So some of the joint projects we're gonna talk about, just a little bit of all of these ones on this list. And so I'm gonna get started with MKO at home. So when the pandemic hit in March, we were actually just in the middle of, um, for, for us in North Hawaii, and had just completed the Journey Through the Universe program that Alyssa is going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So Shelly and I were actually reminiscing um, the way that we run the program in, in North Hawaii is we, we take two weeks and we had just canceled a, a presentation that was supposed to be for all of the first graders at Waimea Elementary School um, the Friday before DOE spring break, which was the last day that any kid has been in school in Hawaii, like under normal circumstances because um, our, our presenters, which were a mix of Keck and CFHD staffs, we had some astronomers, we had some software people, they were going to do um, rockets and these rockets were going to be um, with straws and the kids were gonna blow paper rockets at each other. And Shelly and I were like, oh no, no, no. These are like first graders literally spitting in each other's faces. So we canceled. And, um, but that left, you know, a real, a, a huge void, not only for myself and in terms of the work that I have to do, but also in our work with communities and schools. And we definitely saw a need. Parents were home, teachers were home, everybody was kind of pulling their hair out. So that's when we started MKO at Home, which is a, a video series. And I can show, I'll show a little clip here in a minute of one of our most recent episodes. So the premise of MKO at Home is we have our YouTube channel and um, I'll, I'll, we'll put the information in the, in the chat. We have our YouTube channel and on that YouTube channel every Monday now is a new video from one of the Mauna Kea observatories that either explains a science concept, has some sort of DIY craft component to it or activity that really visualizes science or explain something about Hawaiian culture and astronomy, Hawaiian language and astronomy. So um, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna share my screen so you guys can see um, one of the clips of uh, our MKO at home. And if I could have screen sharing privileges, please. All right, I'm now the co-host. So with that, I can actually share. Um, and we're just going to watch like a short clip here. And this is actually Alyssa. And so this is a little bit of what MKO at Home does. And fingers crossed this works. The star cluster associated with it is Makali'i, or the Pleiades, pictured here. Makahiki in Olelo Hawaii, the Hawaiian language, has a few different meanings. It means year, age, new year and also refers to a time of celebration known as the Makahiki season or the start of the Hawaiian New Year. Every island has its own traditions and stories surrounding Makahiki, but there are of course some common elements as well. This is a picture of Makali'i or the Pleiades as seen from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So Makahiki is a time of celebration, games, friendly competitions, peace, and worship of the god Lono. During the rule of Kamehameha Paea, or King Kamehameha the first, Maki- So that's just a, a sample of what MKO at home is. And so we've done 40 some episodes. And what's really interesting, it, it kind of flipped our thinking on, the, on our heads. Because there are so few of us um, who have dedicated outreach jobs, at least myself, and I'll only speak for myself and my the CFHT people that I work with, 
we were really intimidated by video. We had this idea that like all of the videos had to look super good. Um, you know, I have Envy because at Noir Lab, they have a really excellent graphics team that create these videos. And so we always had a little, I'm gonna say video imposter syndrome. Like, you know, the quality is not gonna be great the audio, like, what are we going to do? And so COVID was, you know, for myself, and I think many others, very freeing in terms of it was like, hey, anything goes right now, right? It's COVID. So that's when I kind of uh, described the model that, that I've been working a lot with lately of it's either going to be a spectacular success or a spectacular failure. And I'm totally fine with it either way, because right now things are different. And so we really kind of need to figure out what we're doing. And so MKO at home is a perfect example of that. And a, a one way that we really collaborate across all of the observatories, because we have a schedule, we have regular inner observatory meetings where we talk about what's our strategy, what's coming next, who's on tap. We've done some live events very similar to this Noir Lab Live. We've had theme weeks. We had Povehi or Black Hole Week. We had Astro Day Live. We had um, a big event around the Venus results. And then that actually our most recent live event. And the last time that I was on a, a YouTube live was I was in my Halloween costume and I'm going to turn it over to Shelly. Who's going to talk a little bit about um, why I was in my Halloween costume on YouTube. <laughs> why were you in your Halloween costume on YouTube? So one of the activities, one of the events that we have as Mauna Kea observatories, one that we partner with, is the solar system walk. And typically the solar system walk happens the last Saturday in October and it coincides with Halloween. Halloween, Mary Beth in her costume. Um, at the end of the solar system walk, we typically have a costume contest. Well, with COVID, none of that was possible this year. We could not do the in-person solar system walk and we couldn't do the in-person costume contest. But we knew that there was a need in our community to get the kids together to form this sort of normalcy for them. And so we came up with this virtual costume contest idea. Of course, everything happened through email, through um, Facebook, through Instagram, and then eventually Zoom through our, and then through our live YouTube platform. So we had a lot of really great um, costume entries this year. I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you our 2020 favorite. Um, he, this is Daxton. He was one of our winners. He was the most 2020 costume. So this is his, uh, he's a Zoom meeting because as we all know, we have been meeting in Zoom for the last seven months. Uh, but in addition to Daxton's costume, we had someone with a homemade transformer costume that sent us a video where he actually transformed from a truck into Optimus Prime. Um, super cute princess costumes, but these kids were all great. They embraced the new technology, you know, almost better than the adults do. Let me tell you, these kids learn super fast. Um, but we did have a bunch of judges from our community. We had uh, Brittany Kuohara, who's from KTA Superstores. She manages their social media. We had Michelle Hartman, who is part of the Honoka Business Association. And then my boss, John O'Mara, who's the chief scientist at Keck Observatory. And our live event was hosted by DC, my favorite DJ on the radio from B93, B97. And he is such a great supporter of um, Mauna Kea observatories and astronomy and just community events in general. And so we had a really great live event where we notified the winners live on camera and the kids are so excited. And it was, it was really a great feeling to be able to do that for our community. So that's the costume contest. And Mary Beth, of course, was there representing M MKO, the Mauna Kea Observatories. And she was Rosie the Riveter. So I appreciate Mary Beth dressing up and that way I don't have to. <laughs> but in addition to, uh, in addition to our costume contest is this event that it's tied to, right? The solar system walk. And typically in the solar system walk, what we do is we take the town of Waimea in between Keck Observatory and Canada, France. And we turn that into our solar system where the sun is here at Keck Observatory and then the Kuiper Belt and Pluto is out at Canada, France, observe, uh, Canada, France, Hawaii Telescope. And um, like I said, with COVID and with us not being able to do that in person, Mary Beth, Carolyn Kaichi from uh, IFA in Hilo, 
and I, we got together and, you know, what are we going to do? How can we make this event virtual? How can we keep this event in our community? And what we've decided to do is to use one of our bypass roads that's on the south side of Waimea Town and um, put stickers on the ground and have people actually do the walk because walking is good for you. You still got to get out and get your exercise, right? It's out in the fresh air, makes it kind of like a healthy thing. Um, people can do it at their own time. They don't all have to congregate. So we're keeping the numbers down, which is a good thing. Um, and what we've done is we've asked our partners in the observatories and Mauna Kea observatories to come together and create videos, one for each planet and our planetary object. So the sun, the Kuiper belt, the um, asteroid belt, they all have videos as well, educational for the, for the kids and the parents, aunties, uncles, grandma, grandpa, bring the whole family along to this solar system walk and have a good time, get out and get some fresh air, be educated. Um, that is coming up. We have not yet had that event and we will be posting details for that on our uh, Mauna Kea Facebook page, on our websites, on all of our social media outlets. And so we hope to have, Mary Beth, I'm guessing, hope to have something soon on that, right? Uh, it is super close. Super close. We're very excited. We can't wait for that event. Two signatures away. All right. And that's those two events. Yeah, and, and so Shelly did dress up for Halloween. I just want that on record. She just wasn't on YouTube. She was sitting in her office. Um, and for the solar system walk, one of the really neat components um, that I'm, I'm super excited about this year is in addition to the videos, the videos are gonna be in English. And then thanks to Alyssa and um, Alexis from the East Asian Observatory and Shelly. So Alexis and Alyssa actually did translations of the video scripts into Alelo Hawaii. And then the two of them and Shelly are recording them. So every video will have the, the English and the Hawaiian um, version in one video. So you'll arrive at the planet, look at the little QR code and get both, both languages. And so that's something that, you know, Alyssa really spearheaded and suggested this year. And, and as a sign of, you know, or even better of how we collaborate, Shelly and I and Carolyn were like, yes, Alyssa, run with that, please do. One of the other really big collaborations that we have, I alluded to earlier through Journey Through the Universe. And, you know, normally I would talk about this and, and all of that kind of stuff, but, um, Alyssa and the Noir Lab and Janice Harvey are the key organizers. Gemini has been doing Journey Through the Universe since 2003, 2004. And so rather than me talk about somebody else's program, I'm going to ask Alyssa to talk about the, the program that, that she is one of, the, one of the key organizers this year. Oh, Kako. Um, yes, thank you for talking about all these great programs and Journey Through the Universe is entering its 17th year in 2021. So 17 years of reaching local Keiki and Helmana with different astronomy related uh, classroom activities. So this program's really grown in its 17 years. And last year we had about 8,000 students that we reached. So 8,000 students in just about one week. So it's one week of classroom visits, but it's a year long program where we do teacher workshops and all sorts of other things. So just as Shelly talked about adjusting a lot of our programs to the new COVID situation, Journey Through the Universe in 2021 will be completely virtual. So we're doing live classroom visits doing, during our typical journey week, which is in March. And then we'll also be um, compiling a bunch of pre-recorded videos from all of our volunteer educators, which are scientists, engineers, IT people, human resources, basically everyone who works at the Mauna Kea observatories um, really cares about this program and helps to make it a success by submitting videos either about science or just about their careers because career awareness for Gemini is super important. We really want all of our students to feel inspired, to come and work for the observatories when they finish school. So I would say that's the gist of Journey Through the Universe. And yeah, we're really happy that now, you know, North Hawaii, CFHT and Waimea um, have been participating for the last few years in a really great way. 
Yeah, so thank you, Alyssa. We, the Gemini just like pioneered the whole thing and we're all super excited to work on it. So for North Hawaii, Shelly and I organize it together and we, we don't target all of West Hawaii, which is massive. Um, we work with our Puwilo, uh, Honoka L Inter and High School and Waimea Elementary School. And so we work with those teachers and really have you know, really fantastic programs. And Journey Through the Universe isn't the only way that the observatories collaborate with school children. In my bio that Jamika read, she mentioned the Mauna Kea Scholars Program. And so the Mauna Kea Scholars Program is my baby. It was, uh, I think I'm in, I think it's year six. So about six years ago, um, my, my boss, Doug Simons, who's the director of the Canada France Wide Telescope, he and I had this like crazy idea that we really wanted to flip the paradigm. So. Um, we have been judging science fairs for years and in all of them you end up with like the kid that you know and they're doing an astronomy project and they knew to ask somebody. And so Doug and I said, well, what if we like do it differently where we go to the students? And so that's what we do with Mauna Kea Scholars. It's in 13 public high schools across the state of Hawaii. Um, it's a very conscious decision to be in public high schools as opposed to some of the private schools on island. I love all school kids equally, um, but I know that the, the public school students that we have, um, particularly here in Hawaii, they don't always have the resources and the opportunities that students at some of the, 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 the private schools do. And so um, I just met with three of my classrooms this morning. It's, it's a totally weird world. So these kids can apply for, they're all high schoolers, um, except my two on Lanai. Um, they apply for observing time on the Mauna Kea observatories to do their own independent research projects. So when I met with them this morning, my, my students at Waikea High School, we were talking a little bit about the program. It was all via... Google Meet, Google Hangout, whatever. Um, and we talked about the program. I talked a little bit about black holes um, to give them some ideas. And then myself and their mentor, Jessica Stasek, we answered their questions. And that's the my favorite part of it is answering the questions. And for me, what's really critical is not that the kids become astronomers, but the fact that the kids start to understand science by doing it as opposed to like opening a book. As I was telling them this morning, you know, we have such an idea um, at times of science being static. You know, you, you open your textbook, chapter four says X, Y, and Z about the solar system and nothing new ever happens. And we really saw this in, in COVID, this idea of science in real time. And this idea that, you know, the scientific process is, is really messy and not every idea that scientists come up with the first time is the right one. It's, we have a method. And so we watched basically adults freak out in this country at times as the scientific method unfolded in real time during COVID. You know, the idea that there was misinformation and that scientists were changing their minds when in actuality they were following the process. It's just a process that is often hidden. So for these students, I want them to be a part of that process. You learn differently when you're, when you're doing something, when it's your work, when you're passionate about it. And the kids can pick any topic that they want, um, any topic that they want. And most of the time when we, when we don't award telescope time, it's because the proposal wasn't feasible. So we had students that wanted to look for white holes, which is like the opposite of a black hole because they watched this video from National Geographic that talked about them. Um, I have a student on Molokai, which is a super rural item island who's doing some really cutting edge research with the at first the James Clark Maxwell telescope and now uh, me at the Canada France Y telescope to look at the Horsehead Nebula um, and the sub millimeter with JCMT and the optical with CFHT. She now has the world's best optical data set of the Horsehead Nebula because she has observations from CFHT that that no professional astronomer ha has. They've never asked for them, and she has. So she's looking at the Horsehead Nebula in very specific colors of light that no, no one else is because they don't have our camera. They don't have the filters that we have that allow only a very certain wavelength of light to pass through. She's working with, um, some myself, I'm mentoring her. Dr. Harriet Parsons from the James Clark Maxwell Telescope worked with her for several years. And 
every school has the freedom to do it differently. And it's a really fun, exciting program that I absolutely love working with. And I miss traveling inner island a lot um, to go visit my students on all of my islands because I, I go and visit them all. Um, I have two seventh graders on Lanai who I thought about it this morning and they may be the, the foremost black hole experts on their entire island because the mentor that mentored them is, is now Dr. Devin Chu. Devin's from Hilo High School on, on Oahu and Jamika got really excited there. Sorry, Hilo High School in Hilo. Oh, Shelly, thank you. This is why I need you. Um, and the reason that Jamika got so excited there was because Devin's advisor for his PhD was Dr. Andrea Gez, who was just awarded the Nobel Prize for her research using the Keck Observatory to uncover the black hole in the center of our universe, along with um, uh, others. So she wasn't the only winner, but she's very near and dear to us in Hawaii because she, she, used, she used Keck. And I think everybody has seen has seen her or has seen a talk that she's done or like, you know, when she's on the mountain and, and all of those kinds of things. The last collaborative project that we want to talk about, again, loops back to teachers and education. And it's another one that's run by our very dear friends at the East Asian Observatory. And so Alyssa participated this year in the Mauna Kea Wonders Workshop, which was done entirely virtually. So this is the whole world that we are the whole world that we're moving in. Okay, so I guess I'll mention that a little bit. So yes, this workshop, Mauna Kea Wonders, is led by um, the East Asian Observatory. And specifically, I think Callie Matalonis does a lot of the spearheading for the program. And so essentially, it's a two day long workshop in which a lot of different professionals from the Mauna Kea Observatories are called together to speak with some teachers in training at UH Hilo. So it's a partnership with the UH Hilo education program. And we try to give these teachers a good idea of all the different resources for education the observatories offer. So for our Gemini programs, we like to talk about a course journey through the universe, but we also have a portable planetarium. So it's like an inflatable dome that we can take to anywhere on the island and inflate it so long as you have a very high ceiling or a covered play court and um, set up a projector on the inside that then becomes a planetarium. And so we train teachers on how to use this and then let them borrow it for a month at a time so that they can show as many of their students as they would like uh, what the night sky looks like on a clear night and during different times of the year. And my favorite cylinder is of course our Polynesian Voyaging Line cylinder, which is what I talk to the teachers in that workshop about. So. We talk about the different resources the observatories offer and the different careers that are available there as well. Because, you know, talking about career awareness again, it is a common misconception that you have to be an astronomer to work in an observatory. And it's actually not true. Only about 20% of our staff, or is it 10%? Depends on the telescope. Depends on the telescope. Okay. 10 to 20% of the staff are astronomers, PhD astronomers. And the rest of the staff are all sorts of other things. There are educational um, people like our group here. And then there's, of course, what I mentioned earlier, engineers, IT. Um, there's even, what is the word I'm looking for here? There, there's one person, one of my favorite people at our observatory, who calls himself a professional shopper. So his whole job is to making sure that we acquire the materials that we need to keep the telescope running smoothly. And he's just very nice. His name's Tito. Shout out to Tito. And <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about Mauna Kea Wonders, if anyone wants to add something. Awesome. I'll just say the reason I said depending on the telescope is you ladies are all from big telescopes with like big staffs. My staff, of four, our staff of 48, 10% um, would be five astronomers. We, we have about a quarter of our staff because we have if we count our director and our remote observers, about 10. Um, if you don't count them, we still we still have more than 10% because we're, we, we're not as big as you guys. Um, but Alyssa, I think that works. That's a beautiful segue because one of the things that Jamika and Alyssa had asked Shelly and I to talk about is, is our career paths. Neither of us were like perfectly straight lines. Um, you know, I actually didn't even know that my job existed until I, I made it. So um, 
if you could, Alyssa, go back to screen sharing. I think Shelly and I each have a slide that talks about that talks about that. You do. And while Alyssa is um, while Alyssa is uh, getting that set up, Mary Beth uh, and Shelly, I definitely appreciate you both um, up to this point. Just. Uh, filling us in on all the ways that, um, that you all help us collaborate together and bring these amazing activities to the community. Um, but I did want to uh, stop here really quickly and ask Alyssa if we have any questions or comments from the YouTube audience, y'all out there. Hello, do you have questions for us? Great, great time to do this. Thank you, Jamika. So we do have a lot of alohas in our chat right now. We have one very nice comment from Kona Skies, which says, thanks to four of my favorite Big Island women for all you do. This is from Maureen and Kona. And we have from Janice Harvey, a yay, Journey Through the Universe 2021, our 17th year. Very exciting. And we have one question from Liz Fleming which is what is the status of construction on the new observatory on Mauna Kea? Thank you, I'll take that one. So um, the, the 30 meter telescope is, is our friend um, in that we are all telescopes that work a little bit differently and have different funders. So, you know, Shelly and I don't technically, we don't work for the same company. Keck does its thing, CFHT does, we do our thing, Gemini does theirs. What I can tell you, and so that the segue for that is, um, sometimes we know just as much as everybody else about the status of the 30 meter telescope. I will say right now, um, they are not constructing and a lot of that has to do with uh, COVID. So the decision was made um, from my understanding in February or March that there was no way that construction could begin because of COVID-19. Um, in addition to everything else that the goes on in Hawaii, you know, all of the discussion surrounding surrounding the 30 meter telescope, but there's no construction taking place right now. And COVID-19 is the, not the only force, but the driving force in their decision to, to press pause on that from my understanding as someone who does not work for them, um, but is aware of, of their situation. Thanks, Mary Beth, great answer. Yes, to clarify for our viewers, all of the observatories are independent from one another in terms of who runs them. And so TMT is their own individual observatory. So we are not privy to uh, updated information every day, but we do a lot of education, education and engagement together, right? Which is what we're talking about here, Mount Kea observatories collaborating on education. We do have one more question, which I think Shelly is ready for. And it is, what are the cute little toy characters behind the presenter? Are they sold on Mauna Kea? Hi, Liz. These characters, these are from a collection called Celestial Buddies. So uh, this, is my, this is my little Jupiter here. You can see the other, the other ones there behind me. I bought them on Amazon. They're super cute. They, um, they usually come with a little tag that gives you some fun facts about the the planet as well. So celestial buddies. Yeah, we, as you noticed, Shelly and I both have them. Um, my Mercury, his, uh, when we didn't adopt a stuffed planet, when we went with COVID. And so Mercury went to Grant Matsushige, who's one, who's our senior instrument specialist. And so he took Mercury to the summit with him. So that meant Mercury needed a safety harness so that he could ride in the crane with Grant. And then for mm -hmm. National Flip Flop Day, he made Mercury flip flops. So Mercury's all, all in his little safety, just in case he falls off my shelf. Um, we, Shelly and I both are deeply fond of our stuffed planets. You can see I've, I've got a couple here and then the, the rest live on the shelf over there in my dining room. That's I, a great question. I'm so glad uh, that uh, our, I think that was uh, Liz maybe who asked that question because I also had that same question. Now I've seen, I've seen these, but I didn't know where you got them from. They're so oh, yeah. cute. This one, this is my black hole over here. That's a good one. Black hole. 
because you can put the rest of them in the black hole. Um, <laughs> they're called celestial buddies. I bought mine from the Inilo Astronomy Center in Hilo because as a corporate member, member, I could get a 10% discount in their store. Um, and so I bought the complete set. And then I don't have Pluto and Sharon with me. One of my coworkers has them, but they came, um, um, they're magnetized together. They, they were new, so they're constantly putting out stuff. In my office at work, I have uh, Polaris A, Polaris AB, and Polaris B. So it's a three-star set. And when you squeeze them, uh, Polaris A, it glows. It's so cool. And then I have baby Yoda here. So baby Yoda was, uh, the child was supposed to travel with me this summer um, because in addition to my other work, I, I manage CFHD social media um, along with my colleague, uh, Callie Crowder. And so baby Yoda was gonna go to places rather than like Mary Beth visits, Mary Beth visits. It was gonna be baby Yoda's adventures. Um, he never traveled anywhere except uh, to my dining room. So he he lives here, he chills with the stuffed planets and he's waving to everybody else out there who has a baby Yoda. I think my niece and nephew might be on. So baby Yoda says hi to their baby Yoda because we have matching baby Yodas, Wesley, Marley and I, so. Okay, it looks like we have one more nice comment in our chat, which says, Aloha from Memphis. Mercury is so cute. Glad it's safe. LOL. We got a new safety officer, um, and Mercury did not want to run afoul of her. So, thank any you so much. Oh, I was going to say thank you so much for those, uh, for the comments, Alyssa and questions from the chat. And I realize that I don't think we could see your video in the last 30 seconds. Mary Beth, we were seeing Shelly and Shelly was showing a really awesome, one of those celestial buddies. But if we could go back, Mary Beth, and if you will show us, yes, baby Yoda, we, we missed it. And I think we just, we just need to share that. Yes. Like I said, he's waving hi. Hi, Marley and Wesley. And to all of the kids out there, Baby Yoda says hi. <laughs> I love it. So, and when you're out doing these outreach activities, um, as you said, and if we can get back to, to that career slide, Alyssa, and I appreciate that. Um, Mayor Beth, you said initially that you didn't know that your job even existed. And while we're getting back to that, that slide um, to do the screen share, could you just tell us a little bit about what did you mean you didn't know your job existed? So when, when I was in high school, I, I was good in math and science. And so, you know, everyone's like, you should think about being an engineer. So I'm like, okay. So I went to Penn State. I was an engineering major for six weeks and I hated it. The single best class that I've ever taken in, um, in college was my freshman seminar introduction to aerospace engineering. And I remember very vividly, I had this, I got this piece of balsa wood and I was supposed to make an airplane out of it. And I did. And I was, I was the only girl in the class, which wasn't really an issue. It's being the only woman in the room is not uncommon for me then and still isn't for me now. Um, and my airplane went like, bloop, and it just, it was a disaster. And everybody else's airplane was better. And the part of it that made me like, I'm hyper competitive. And the part that made me ask some serious questions was, I didn't care. Like, I didn't care that my airplane sucked. Um, and I realized at that point that, you know, maybe this isn't for me. So I was taking an astronomy class from a professor who looked like Colonel Sanders. And I realized that I should, um, I really liked astronomy. So I switched majors, was really nervous about telling my parents for some reason. And all they said was like, can you get a job? And I said, yes. And, and, and it worked out really well. And then my plan was to get 
uh, my PhD in astronomy. And I, I have migraines. Um, I've had them since I was 13. And um, they did not, my frequency and intensity of headaches didn't really play well with the physics GREs that you need to take when you go into college to go into graduate school. And I did horrible, like horrible. And I, I saw, I knew I wasn't getting in and I saw this job posting for my first job in Hawaii of service observer. I was supposed to be here for two years and operate the cameras at CFHT. And and I, I moved here um, 17 years later, I still live in Hawaii. I've, I've not lived anywhere um, other than Hawaii for the past 17 years, 13 of them on the big island. And while I was, when I got to CFHT, I started working with, um, and I had done a little bit of this in college, like kids come in and, you, and they need you to, you know, talk, someone to talk to them about space. And then I started doing that more and more and more in Hawaii. And I realized, oh, like this is a job. The first teacher whose classroom I ever visit was Susie Ho, Waimea Elementary School, fourth grade. I work with Susie's husband and I've been talking to Susie's students for probably 16 years now. And so it was at that point, as I looked around and I saw people across the observatories like Peter Michaud and Janice at, at Gemini and, and um, Liz Bryson, the librarian that I used to work with, I realized that, that people actually have this career path. So I went back to school while I was working and I got my master's degree in educational technology. And then I, I left the big island. Um, my, my husband actually works with Shelly. He's, he can probably hear me because he's in his office right now um, and I talk loud. And so um, it's across the hall, it's catty corner from Shelly. And so I, he graduated from law school and we moved to Honolulu. And that's when I became a lecturer um, in astronomy and managed a planetarium. And about six years ago, I applied for a job at the Canada France Hawaii Telescope as outreach manager. It was the first time that CFHT had had a full-time dedicated outreach manager and, and I applied for it. And then um, I started and a month later, there were the, the first round of protests that involved the, the trying to build the 30 meter telescope that we mentioned earlier. And that's when my whole job changed. And that's when we had this incredible freedom, um, Doug and I, to really experiment with things like Mauna Kea Scholars, the Kama Aina Observatory experience um, and uh, that I didn't mention, which is summit tours pre-COVID in the before times for Hawaii residents. And um, we have all of these really great programs um, that, that we've been able to kind of come out of that and have this freedom to, again, spectacular failure, or spectacular success. And about a year ago, I was promoted to director of strategic communications. I say promoted as though like the this is what I meant when my job, like I did the job didn't exist. When I was pr promoted, the position was created. And so I'm the first person at CFHT to, to have that position. And now I talk uh, about astronomy all the time to people. Um, some of them are kids, some of them are adults. It, it, it really runs, really runs the gamut. And I know that Shelly's had a, a similarly interesting career path. So I, I wanna make sure that she, she talks about hers because hers is even more winding than mine. And I'm happy that she's there. We actually thought, I joked that we should entitle this not partners in outreach, but partners in crime. Um, Cause Shelly and I do a lot of things together. So Shelly, your winding road. My winding road. I think it is actually a little bit more circuitous than yours is. Um, when I graduated from high school, I went to UH Manoa. That's not even on here because I was only there for a year. And I, you know what? I dropped out. I flunked everything. My parents were not happy. It wasn't, it wasn't time for me to go to school at that point in time, I guess. Um, but after that, I got a job at the DOE. I was in a department called Distance Learning Technology when... Um, at a time when technology was not really in schools yet, which is weird to think of, but that was a long time ago, it was in the 90s. And we had these humongous terminals. And anyway, that's how I got my first taste of technology, which I super love now. Um, from there, I moved to the Big Island. I got married to my husband who's from here. I was at Kalakehe Elementary School. I opened Waikoloa Elementary School. Um, back then we only had 180 kids, they have 800 now. Um, I did some career counseling at Hilo High School. I worked in special education. So like all over the DOE, I've been in a lot of departments. 
Um, from there, I went back to school. I found that I kind of missed being in school. I was in my mid thirties when I went back to UH Hilo and I got my degree in geography and environmental studies. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna go and get a job in my field. It's kind of what everybody expects you to do, right? And I tried, I tried to get a job in my field and everybody wanted you to have experience. Well, how do you get experience if you don't have the job? And I think that's, it's a real, real issue for local kids that um, take that torch up and go to college and get their degree. And then they wanna come back home and they wanna get a job in their field, but they don't have the experience. Um, and part of what we do as Mauna Kea Observatories is provide careers that kids can go and get advanced degrees in, in software engineering, in mechanical engineering, and get their PhDs in astronomy and still be able to come home and work here, work in Hawaii, work on the Big Island. Um, but I'm not working in my field in geography, but that's okay. I, so I, I took all that knowledge that I, I ga uh, gathered in, in UH Manoa, Kapilani Community College, UH Hilo, Hawaii Community College in Hilo. And I brokered that into a job at Queens Marketplace. And at Queens Marketplace, I was the events coordinator, which was kind of like basically having a party every day, which was fabulous. Um, and I got a lot of great contacts there. I was there for five years. And then I went to a friend's catering business because I love to cook and I helped her do that for a while. I worked at Starbucks, went back to Waikoloa School, and then eventually ended up here at Keck Observatory where I had a lot of friends working here and they kept saying, you should come and work at Keck, you'd be really great. You'll love all the stuff that we do. And so I applied and my first job was not the outreach coordinator. And I eventually just kind of morphed into that role. Um, and same thing, it was not an individual role when I, when I first started here. Somebody was just kind of covering it and turns out that I was good at it. And so now I am the outreach coordinator for Keck Observatory. And part of what I do, we talked about this whole hour is work with the other observatories and, and bring science, not only astronomy education, but STEM education. We talk about engineering and software jobs. And we really want kids, students, even non-traditional students to be able to know that they can come back into the education place and get a degree or just get continuing education and find that job here back back at home, back in Hawaii um, and become part of the Mauna Kea Observatory's Ohana. There are so many jobs available at observatories that are not PhD astronomy jobs. I'm, I'm proof of one of them. And you know, if I, can, if I can be here working, doing something I love, other people can as well. That's amazing, Shelley. Thank you so much, both of you ladies, for, for sharing uh, your path there. <clears throat> because I think it is, it's very important for all of us to be able to see that there are many ways to support the work that observatories do. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate that. And I, and I would like to say that one of my first experiences with uh, Mary Beth is uh, working with her with uh, Mauna Kea Scholars um, we, for the first time, brought the program to uh, over to Oahu to um, Waianae at Nanakuli High School. I was, um, Alyssa and I didn't talk about our career paths because that's going to be on a different, a different show, but uh, a bit about my background is that um, my background is in education. I've been a teacher for 13 years, and uh, in that position uh, a few years ago, on Oahu, I was I was fortunate enough to be at uh, Nanakuli High and Intermediate School under uh, Darren Pili Aloha as principal, and he was very supportive of bringing um, Emmy Loa and other um, astronomy activities to the community. And uh, one of the programs that he was totally in support of was allowing the students who were interested to participate in Mauna Kea Scholars. And so Mary Beth, as well as uh, Doug Simmons, head of um, CFHT and others came over to uh, Nanakuli and worked with my students throughout the year, came over at the end of the year for a fantastic program and awarded them telescope time. And I just have to say the students absolutely loved it. 
And these were juniors and seniors. And in the next year, one of the junior young ladies uh, participated as a senior. And I do believe that program is still continuing at Nanakuli Mary Beth. Is that true? Um, we every, every year I find a new teacher there. Um, the the longevity of that of that of teaching in that in that community is has been ever changing. Um, I will say I don't have anyone right now, primarily because COVID. And so every year I reach back out to the principal and um, and the you know the science team there and and the DOE to be like, so who who's there now? Um, but with COVID and everything happening, th this year has been really difficult to kind of, as everybody knows, to kind of keep the momentum going, particularly um, with with finding new people and working with new people. Everybody's just kind of like all the time. But yes, I, I not a coolie, we were so excited. Uh, we had a really great, Doug and I had a really great experience where we were um, get, like, we're, we were dressed up because we were doing a word ceremony and we take this very seriously. And it was the time that for some reason we had a rental Mustang. So we pull up to the Nana Cooley McDonald's at 6.30 in the morning or seven in the morning um, uh, and are in dressed up. He's wearing an Aloha shirt and pant, like Aloha shirt, nice pants and dress shoes. I've gone on a dress and heels in a Mustang at the McDonald's closest to school. And yeah, we, we stuck out for a lot. <laughs> but um, this is not the first time doing these award ceremonies that we, I have been, I feel like the most dressed up person somewhere. Um, it happened to me on Maui too. I'm like sitting in a Starbucks and everybody else is in like board shorts and a, and a tank top. And I have on like heels and a dress because we're doing an award ceremony. So these kids deserve my nice shoes. Absolutely. And I remember that award ceremony, uh, the one I, I, for uh, my students at Nanakuli, and it was fantastic. And, and the students dressed up and their family and the parents, they all dressed up too. So it's definitely quite an event. And, and we definitely appreciate um, certainly all the outreach efforts that everyone um, who participates uh, in the outreach activities here at the observatories on Mauna Kea that they, that they actually do for the community. It's very much appreciated all of the time. And even in, in the situation right now where things had to be changed to be virtual and we're trying to adapt to this new changing landscape of how we can communicate and engage with our community. I just am very appreciative of everyone's efforts to continue um, trying to connect with the community because those, um, those connections are important, especially as we reflect on the growing and changing needs of the youth in our community. And uh, also, of course, non-traditional uh, students who are in uh, university as well. So that's very much appreciated. And we're at three o'clock. So Alyssa, really quick check-in. Uh, last comments or questions from our YouTube audience? Just a few last comments um, we have from Jane. Over turf, it says our baby Yoda says hi back. So I think that's to Mary Beth and her baby yes. Yoda. That would be my sister and uh, my my niece and nephew. And the she, they were they were watching, and so um, they're we like I said we have matching baby Yodas, and so our baby Yodas sometimes communicate to each other via um, FaceTime. So baby Yoda to baby Yoda, it's a, it's a deep connection. Okay, and then we have from Janice Harvey, really enjoy hearing your pathways to your careers. I can second that. I can't believe I've never heard them before, Shelly and Mary Beth. Like, those are great, great motivators for continuing on this path. And from Kona Skies, we have a very interesting, and that is all of our comments for the channel. Well, I'd like to thank you so much, Alyssa, for being an excellent moderator and also slash guest <laughs> coming in and speaking on uh, Journey Through the Universe and Mauna Kea Wonders. We will have... Uh, Alyssa and Janice Harvey, who just uh, had that last comment, we will have them uh, on live from Noir Lab at Hawaii at a later date, closer to Journey to the Universe um, in March, so we can get all the details on uh, that flagship program here um, at the Gen International Gemini Observatory. 
So we'd like to thank Shelly Pelfrey and Mary Beth Lechek so much for being our guest today. And for those of you who still have uh, maybe even more questions or comments, please feel free to, um, you can go ahead and leave those uh, in the comment section under the video description, and we'll be sure to get those questions to Shelly and Mary Beth. Coming up next week is another Live from Noir Lab, and we will be back at our regular time, uh, our regular day, which is on Wednesdays. And next week we are in Chile. So that's our In Beeble This Day Noir Lab with your host, Manuel Paredes. And he will have uh, for his guests. Andrea Castillo speaking on how to preserve the dark night skies. We hope you can join us. Thank you very much. And we would like to say an aloha to everyone. And let me leave those final alohas to Shelly and Mary Beth. Aloha, hui ho, mahalo for being here today. Jamika and Alyssa, thank you so much for hosting us. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about our collaboration with you and with all the rest of the Mauna Kea observatories. And uh, thank you. Thank you both again. Thanks to Noir Lab for hosting us. And Shelly made a comment earlier about how she was, you know, she was good at her job. I completely disagree. She is amazing at her job. And I am really lucky to work with, you know, both her and Jamika and Alyssa. And, you know, it was just the two of us, uh, the four of us talking today, but we really are a very, large, dedicated, and passionate group um, across the observatories that, that work together to do and run these programs. So many of them are, are too big for one facility to do by themselves. And so we have an incredible amount of teamwork and collaboration. And so Baby Yoda, the stuffed planets, and I are all just going to say aloha.